In this video, I want to show you how you can use the generate and generate all DAX functions in Power BI. We're going to go through these step by step together. And I'm also going to show you a couple of real life examples of when you would use this type of function. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernand and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So generate and generate all DAX functions in Power BI essentially return a Cartesian product between the two tables that you specify. A Cartesian join is essentially a cross join that returns all possible combinations between table one and table two. In a previous video, I covered the different types of joins that you can do in Power BI. So if you want to know what those types are, go check out that video. There is only a minor difference though between the two functions. So let's have a look at it with a couple of examples. Here's a report that I prepared for you today. Uh, we have a few tables that I prepared. A few of them are pretty simple. So first of all, we have a calendar table, which I'll use for some time intelligence uh, functions today. So we have a list of uh, different days uh, across a couple of years. We have a list of courses, which is just a list of courses, uh, learning courses that we have within the company. We have different regions here, which is the regions that we uh, serve or we, um, uh, we operate in. And we have a ticket, which is a list, a sample list of tickets for a fictional contact center. So we have a list of all the tickets, when they were requested and when they were closed. None of these have a relationship between them because the actual purpose of the demo is to show you the uh, DAX functions themselves, but I'll show you how they will, or how I'll use them in a second. So if we go to the data view here and you can see that we have uh, different learning courses that the company provides. And as I mentioned, we have the different regions that we want to roll out the courses to. Let's say we have a task to generate a table, which lists all of the courses across all of the regions. So you will have uh, EMEA to have all of these courses as their own line within a row, and then LATAM, same thing, APAC, same thing, NA, same thing. And this is a pretty good use case for using the generate function. So the generate function, if we look at it in the uh, documentation, is as it returns a table with the Cartesian product between each row in table one and the table that results from evaluating table two in the context of the current row from table one. So it's essentially an iterator. So same as the sum x, uh, min x, max x, that kind of stuff. It takes two parameters, the two tables that we want to create a Cartesian product in between, and returns a table of the Cartesian product that we want, so a single table. So what that means is we can't just create a measure, we have to create a table, a DAX, DAX uh, table instead. So we'll create a new table here. We'll name this one, let's say generate. And we're gonna start by writing generate and we'll specify the two tables that we want here. So we want the uh, region table and then we want the courses table. If we now close that, and there we go. So you can see that for each region, if I just sort it by region right here, it gives you all of the courses that is available within our learning platform. Same thing with EMEA, same thing with LATAM. And you've done it pretty quickly using just one function. So that's pretty simple. And what you'll notice is that if I change it to generate all, it actually returns us the exact same thing. So what is the actual difference? So here we are looking at the generate all uh, description in the documentation. 
And you will see that for the majority of uh, the details here, like the description, the syntax, even the parameters and the return value are the same, but the distinction and where it's different is in the remarks. So to keep it simple, essentially what it does is it returns everything on the table two, regardless if the table two has non no values for that row, um, which generate function normally excludes. It's probably better if I show you an example so that you can see exactly what I mean by that. So let's have a look at this new uh, example here, the tickets table, which as I mentioned is a list of uh, tickets generated for this fictional contact center. We have different tickets uh, with their request date and close dates. And we'll use the calendar table with it. And let's say our task is to create a row for each of the days in between each of these tickets. So for example, you have a password expired. It was requested on the 1st of Jan and closed on the 1st of March. Maybe from here, what we want to do is to generate a new table with this ticket, with all of the days within the 1st of Jan to the 1st of March as a row by itself perhaps to do an even further cleanup, maybe exclude uh, weekends or maybe just to count them, right? So let's try to do the same thing that we did earlier, which is to create a new table. So we'll create a new table here and we'll just name this uh, generate tickets and we we'll use the generate function, same thing as before, but the syntax will be slightly different. So the first table that we want is obviously the tickets table. And then for the second table, what we want to use is the dates between because we want to generate the dates between the uh, request dates and the closed dates for each of the tickets within the table one. So we'll say uh, dates between and then we'll refer to the calendar dates within the calendar table. The start date that we want is the first date for each uh, well, for, for each of the tickets will be the request date and the end date will be the closed date. If we close that and hit enter, you will see that it does exactly that. So you have password expired and you'll have multiple rows for uh, this ticket, but each of the row is a different day within that uh, period. So you have request date starts on the 1st of Jan and closes at the 3rd of March. So you'll see that the date here is every single day within that ticket until the end, which is the 1st of March. So you can see here the last row is the, the 1st of March, which is the closed date for that ticket. Same thing with the issues logging. So you see it finishes, uh, it starts on the 2nd of Jan and it finishes on the 2nd of Feb. So it generates that accordingly and same thing with the, this third ticket. However, what you'll notice in this example is you'll notice something odd within it. So if you look at the ticket table here, you'll notice that we have a fourth ticket, pay related questions. Now it starts on the 2nd of January and it finishes on the 1st of January, which is obviously incorrect. But what generate has done uh, is that it, it didn't include it. And the reason is that the dates between, the one that defines the date of what you want to generate against returned null. So when the table two is null, it gets excluded in this Cartesian product, which maybe you want or maybe you don't want. Generate always excludes those table two with null values. However, generate all doesn't do that, it includes the, the values from table one, regardless if there are any matches or any values in table two. So the easiest way that I could sh show that is by adding and just changing it into generate all. So if you hit enter, you'll see that it gives you roughly the same values, except that you will also find the ticket number four in this list. So you see that the dates between didn't generate anything because the dates between the request date and the close date are wrong, but it still shows it even if it's blank. So there you go. And that's really it for this video. I hope you now know how easy it is 
for you to use the generate and generate all DAX functions in Power BI to generate your Cartesian products. And I hope you also now know what the key differences are between these two functions. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.